All right, welcome everyone. Um, welcome everybody to session two of our Global Health and Population Brown Bag Lunch. Uh, my name is Kevin Pro. I'm an assistant professor in the department. Can, can you all hear me? Let's check the audio. Yes, we can. Wonderful. Um, so I'm very pleased to, to welcome today our guest, Dr. Kibran Kafare from the Development Economics Group at the World Bank. Um, Dr. Tafre is an applied development microeconomist uh, with uh, a really interesting uh, range of, of research interests, which are really, I think, uh, closely tied to a lot of the things that, that we study here. Um, so he has work um, spanning from environmental to education and health economics. Um, and he works on a set of topics uh, related to long run uh, uh, factors that affect uh, health and education and also agricultural productivity, and also social protection. Uh, he has a PhD in economics from Cornell University. And uh, in addition to being, uh, as I said, a, a really interesting uh, applied uh, microeconomist, he's also a former colleague of mine and, uh, and a close collaborator. And so I'm very, very pleased to welcome him here today. And I think his topic is something that uh, we'll all find interesting, that the effect of mobile phones and mobile technology on, on health outcomes. Um, so uh, without any further ado, I will hand it over to you, Kibram. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we usually have 35 to 40 minutes to, to present and then some Q&A. And then we, we finish up um, at, at two so that the, especially the, the students can, can make it to their next classes on time. Um, so I will hand it over to you, Kibram. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks for the nice introduction and for, for the invite. So today I present to you a joint work with Justice T. Mensa at the IFC and Kabrom Abai at IFPRI. Uh, so the, our paper looks at the effects of mobile phones in, in, on infant mortality uh, in Africa. So uh, by way of motivation, I'll start uh, with the fact that digital technologies, uh, so just to set the, the stage, so I'm going to use digital technologies, mobile phone, mobile technologies interchangeably, so you don't get confused. So uh, I'll start by saying that digital technologies, uh, such as mobile phones, have revolutionized the way information and uh, various services are delivered. And this has become even more prominent during the COVID-19 pandemic, when the nature of work, communication changed uh, dramatically. Uh, this development is particularly important in the African context, where access to hard infrastructure, such as roads and health facilities, is limited. So in the context of Africa, uh, many believe that mobile technologies, or broadly speaking, digital technologies, are the most quick, uh, successfully and quickly ad adopted technology. And in that sense, you see dramatic transformation in the number of mobile phone users on the continent over the last two decades. Between uh, 1999 and 2020, uh, the number of uh, mobile phone users, that is his, here users defined in terms of people ha who have access to mobile phone coverage increased from uh, approximately 80 million in 1999 uh, to 850 million uh, in 2020. This has triggered a lot of interest on in the impacts of these uh, quickly uh, expanding technologies. Um, some on Africa and, and, and some work elsewhere as well, primarily Asia and Latin America. Some of the prominent work that looks at the effects of uh, mobile phones on uh, various household welfare outcomes in developing countries includes Jackie and Suri's seminal work on impacts of mobile phones uh, on financial inclusion in Kenya, uh, the effects of mobile phones in reducing price dispersion in various markets such as uh, India by Jensen and uh, a few African countries by Acre and uh, co-authors. And uh, people have studied the impact of mobile phones on education outcomes, on a range of household welfare outcomes, including consumption, income, poverty, uh, as well as more recently on political mobilization and uh, 
accountability of politicians when for monitoring elections as well. But uh, there is very little work on uh, the effects of mobile technologies on, on uh, health uh, outcomes, especially at scale. There is uh, a growing work that looks at the effects of mobile health applications on specific health outcomes, but that's a bit removed from what we do here. Here we are looking at large scale expansion of infrastructure, mobile infrastructure on health outcomes. And there are two papers closest to ours. The first work is by Gonzalez and Mafioli who look at the effects of mobile phones in facilitating emergency care provision during the Ebola pandemic in Liberia. And another work by uh, Amaral Garcia and co-authors on the effects of mobile phones. And actually primarily this is, uh, they look at the effects of the internet on diffusion of demand for cesarean section in the UK. Uh, so why are we interested in infant mortality? I don't really need to motivate this to, to this crowd, but because it is in, in my slide, I'm going to say it. <laughs> so we know uh, infant mortality is uh, an important metric of societal health, and its uh, reduction is seen as an important social uh, measure of social advancement. Uh, and in that regard, there has been a significant progress in reducing infant mortality globally, as well as uh, on, on the African continent. Globally, uh, in the last uh, 30 years or so, it has come down. The, the number of deaths per 1,000 life births has come down from approximately 65 to 28. And similar progress has been registered in, in Africa as well. Despite that progress, however, there is now there is still significant uh, regional differences in the distribution of infant mortality uh, across regions. And still, sub -Saharan, uh, sub Saharan Africa is home to the highest rate of uh, infant mortality at 52 days per 1,000 live uh, births. And the primary cause of this high rate of infant mortality is considered. Uh, to be complications during birth, premature birth, and early childhood diseases, such as sepsis, pneumonia, diarrhea, and malaria, all of which easily preventable and treatable. And many uh, ascribe the reason why, uh, despite the, the, the recent progress, this remains very high to lack of infrastructure. So the question, lack of health infrastructure. So uh, in this paper, what we try to, to do is answer the question whether or not mobile phones help in kind of reducing the prevalence or uh, so reducing uh, the infant mortality rate by increasing access to uh, healthcare and by uh, creating, facilitating innovative ways of delivering services. And we also try to kind of understand what the underlying mechanisms are, if, they, if that's the case. So in what way would mobile phones affect uh, infant mortality? So uh, we can imagine at least three possible channels in which this can happen. The first one is access to health information. The mobile phones would facilitate communication between healthcare providers and users, as well as within uh, communities. Uh, this, uh, this is especially relevant in areas that are lacking in access to physical uh, health facilities uh, and mediums such as SMS messaging and calls can be used to kind of expand access to healthcare. Uh, the second, uh, uh, the second, sorry, to, to, to kind of improve uh, knowledge, health knowledge of uh, communities. The second uh, channel is health service delivery. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, physical lack of access is an important uh, constraint on, excuse me, on health uh, outcomes uh, in Africa, but access to mobile phone will make it easier for households to contact uh, their, their health, uh, health professionals during emergencies. And also it kind of facilitates alternative ways of delivering health services to areas that are lacking access, such as through telemedicine. And there is now plenty of evidence in Africa that this is actually happening. Some of the most prominent applications include the Hello Doctor app that is available in 10 or so African countries, provides all sorts of health information 
and the high doctor uh, is similar. Uh, the Mom Connect and Omami uh, applications are a bit more uh, kind of specific in a sense that Mom Connect focuses on maternal health, so prenatal, on prenatal care, uh, delivery care, etc. while the Omami app focuses on uh, child health, so good child health practices, on vaccinations, so they would send out reminders to parents uh, about vaccines, uh, etc. So th this is ongoing. So this is made uh, possible because of expansion of health services in the continent. And finally, the third channel through which mobile phones can affect health output is through their general impact on health uh, on household welfare. So access to mobile phone would increase. Uh, employment opportunity and increase household incomes, consumption, and reduce poverty, and this would affect lower infant mortality rates. So uh, to answer our question, we rely on a, a range of variables, and I'll, I'll classify this into three. The first set of data sets are health outcomes data, and this comes from uh, the demographic health surveys uh, from 25 African countries, and we chose these countries based off of our availability of mobile coverage data. Uh, countries that do not have mobile coverage data have been excluded from our analysis, and our data covers uh, children born between 1998 and 2016. Uh, the reason uh, for, uh, that we do not include most or more recent years is that when we started working on this, the latest data on, on mobile coverage we had was 2017, and in, in the DHS data up to that point, uh, so there were only 90 births in 2017. So we dropped those. So we we, we look at the children born between 1998 and 2016. The DHS data is then matched with uh, 0 0.1 by 0 0.0 degree grid cells to to kind of Kind of enable matching, matching or merging this with geospatial data. That's the mobile coverage data. So the second data is mobile coverage data, and this comes from uh, Collins uh, Bartholomew, a digital uh, mapping company, and they create this data by combining data from mobile uh, national mobile operators under the GSMA and uh, open source uh, mobile coverage map uh, from cell towers. So they combine this and create a, a, a mobile uh, coverage data. And uh, we combine this with population density maps to, uh, at one kilometer by one kilometer spatial resolution to calculate the percentage of households in a grid cell that has access to mobile. As I will explain later, our mobile coverage data is just a measure of percentage of households in a given grid cell that have access to mobile. So I, will, I will explain later. And we also use a range of uh, additional variables. Uh, so the first one is lightning intensity, which I will, as I will explain later, is which we use as, as an instrument for expansion of mobile technology uh, in, in Africa. The second set of variables are temperature and precipitation because these are directly linked to our instrument, which is lightning intensity and our uh, outcome of interest child health. So to, uh, to kind of remove a potential confounding there, we include temperature and precipitation in our regressions. Uh, the other variable we use is light and uh, night light luminosity. So this is used as a measure of local economic activity because mobile phones affect presumably affect child health, as well as local economic activity areas with mobile phone will have better economic activity and that uh, in turn affects child health. So, so to remove that channel, we control for uh, local economic activity by including nighttime uh, luminosity. And a couple of other variables we use for robustness exercise. Uh, that one is the special data of health facilities in Africa. This is used to kind of show that lightning strikes do not affect uh, access to healthcare. So because access to healthcare has direct implication to health. And if our instrument affects the location of health facilities, then it will not be exogenous, right? So to, to establish that's the case, we use the special data of health facilities in Africa 
It covers 50 countries on the continent and approximately uh, one, around 100,000 public health, uh, publicly managed health facilities. And the final data set is the IPONS performance monitoring for action data. This is used to kind of, again, establish that our instrument does not impact the performance of these facilities, which would have implications to health outcomes of work. Now, uh, by the way, I, I forgot to mention, if you have any questions that requires my immediate reaction, you really need to wait until I finish my presentation. I'm happy for you to interrupt me at any point. So if uh, anyone has questions, it would be a good place to pause for a bit. If not, I can go on. Okay. Looks like maybe I should continue. Okay, let me briefly talk about uh, how we construct our mobile coverage data. As I mentioned earlier, our mobile coverage data is a measure of the percentage of people in each grid say living in an area with mobile network coverage. So when I, when, when I speak of grid sales, we have two tiers of grid sales. There are underlying grid sales and our analysis grid sales. The underlying grid sales are one kilometer by one kilometer, so their size is one kilometer by one uh, kilometer. That's uh, how uh, our mobile coverage data comes. So we aggregate this up to an 11 kilometer by 11 kilometer by weighting each underlying. So here K refers to the underlying uh, grid set. So in an 11 by 11 kilometer, we roughly have 121 one by one uh, grid cells. Then we have data on the population size in these one kilometer by one kilometer grid cells. And we also know whether or not there is mobile coverage in these underlying one kilometer by one kilometer grid cells. This is a dummy that takes one if that underlying grid cell has coverage, zero otherwise. And we weight that by the population in the grid cell divided by the population in the larger grid cell. This gives us the percentage of households in the 11 kilometer by 11 kilometer grid cell that has access to mobile phone. Now, next, what I would like to show you is whether or not the mobile coverage data so constructed is a good measure of access to mobile phones uh, in Africa. So for that, uh, we use three different measures. The first one is the simple dummy variable that takes value one if a household has mobile phones zero otherwise, the, the, the columns three to five are constructed based off of uh, various two types of mobile services, specifically use of mobile money and use of internet. As you can see, there is a strong correlation between uh, the mobile coverage data we have and actual uptake. So while we admit uptake is different from coverage, they are highly correlated. So it's based off of this that we identify our estimated impact. To give you a sense of uh, trends in mobile coverage, so we have a figure here. The top panel shows trends in 2G in the second generation mobile technologies. We have three types of mobile technologies on the continent. So if I could go back uh, for a second. So here, let me be clear uh, on what we mean by technology. We have 2G, 3G, and 4G technologies in Africa. 2Gs were rolled out in 1999, 3G technologies in 2007, and 4G in 2015. So our mobile coverage data takes the max of either of those three. If a given area has, say, 70% coverage of 2G, 10% coverage of 3G, and none, then that grid cell will have a 70% coverage. The maximum of the three technologies is what we consider to be mobile technology. Later on, we will, we will split the sample by technology type and see if there is implication. Now, going back to this map, as you can see, be, between 1999, when uh, mobile phones started falling out in Africa, to 2018, there has been a dramatic change in, uh, in mobile coverage. In most of Africa, except a couple of countries where we have uh, where we have uh, no data, Ethiopia here in Libya, uh, there has been significant change in mobile coverage. 
but with, when it comes to 3G and 4G technologies, it's very sporty. So only uh, kind of, if you see the coloring, it's mostly concentrated around Nigeria, Egypt, and, and Southern Africa. Elsewhere, it is still lacking. So as a result, much of our results are going to be driven by 2G technologies. So to proceed on to my empirical strategy, before we go into the details, I would like to start with a simple correlation between mobile coverage and infant mortality. Here, the dots are aggregate infant mortality rates by the DHA sample. Here, for example, ML06 is uh, the average infant mortality rate in, for Mali in the 2006 sample. Uh, RW05 is Rwanda for the 05 sample, etc. Egypt 08 is here, Egypt 14 is here. So as you can clearly see, there is a negative relationship between mobile coverage and infant mortality. And in fact, the correlation coefficient is really significant, it's very high. It is 0.56, negative 0.56. This motivates our uh, baseline uh, identification strategy, which is two-way fixed effects. Our uh, baseline specification controls for, so here, let me just discuss the variables first. Why we, uh, here is our outcome of interest, which is infant mortality. And this is a dummy variable that takes value one. If an infant has died, a child has died before their first birthday, zero otherwise. And we have our mobile coverage variable here. This is a vector of child, mother, and uh, community controls. Community in our case refers to grid cell characteristics. And we control for child's birth year, child's birth month, and grid cell uh, fixed effects. So these fixed effects uh, partial out the effects of uh, common grid specific effects, uh, common time specific effects, and common birth month uh, specific effects. So if mobile coverage was rolled out in an exogenous manner, and the quotient alpha one would identify the causal impact of mobile coverage on uh, infant mortality. However, in our setting, this is unlikely to be the case for at least two reasons. One, we know that mobile operators prioritize areas with uh, better economic potential, so areas that are urban, that are richer, that have better access to other infrastructures such as roads and health facilities are likely to get uh, mobile uh, coverage first, and that would compound our, our estimates. So that's a problem. And the second pro uh, concern is that mo mobile expansion could follow or coincide with expansion of other public infrastructure. So it would be impossible to isolate and, and, and unless we have complete data on every infrastructure ever built in a grid cell, and that is a really high ask. So because of this, we rely on an alternative identification strategy to draw causal, uh, causal estimates to, to, to generate causal estimates. So that strategy is instrumental variable strategy and our instrument to identify the causal impact of mobile phones on uh, infant mortality is lightning intensity. We have detailed data on lighting intensity on the continent at, a, wow, uh, at 11 by 11 kilometer grid cell. We match this with the mobile coverage data to try and see if lighting intensity predicts mobile coverage. So the argument goes like this. So we know lightning intensity releases electrostatic waves and which may generate, which may lead to a voltage surge and cause Destruction of electrical components of uh, digital infrastructure, uh, such as mobile phones. And to uh, mitigate against this, companies often install surge protectors, and surge protectors are really expensive. And in areas where companies have the need to install surge protectors to protect themselves against destruction of property the expansion of network, mobile network tends to be slower. 
and this has been established uh, in various countries, the US and, and, and uh, in studies that actually cover more than 180 countries as well. So our instrument is basically interaction between lighting intensity, the average lighting activity in a grid set interacted with time dummy. And this approach allows us, allows the effect of lightning on mobile coverage to be heterogeneous over time. We don't need to kind of limit it to a linear trend. There will be a nonlinear, we were allowed to be nonlinear the effect of time. So in the context we study, this is a very powerful instrument because Africa has the highest lighting activity in the world, at least six times more than the global average. Uh, the average in Africa is 17.3 strikes per kilometer square per year, whereas the global average is 2.9 strikes per kilometer square. And we believe our instrument would be strong enough to identify uh, the impacts of mobile coverage uh, on, on infant mobility. So of course, the exclusion restriction we advance here is conditional on controls. I've discussed the controls, which is child, mother, and community controls, and climate controls, such as temperature, precipitation, and controls for economic activity. Lightning influences, lightning activity influences health outcomes only through access to mobile phones. There are some plausible channels, this might not be the case. So in the paper, which I don't discuss today, we do a, a range of robustness checks to rule out potential channels that might that may lead to violation of this exclusion restriction. And we are not recreating anything here, uh, creating anything here. This is a fair, fairly well-established instrument. And more recently, uh, the most recent papers that came out in the economic literature are Manacorda and Tesi on econometrica and Uriah on uh, uh, quarterly journal economics. Uh, we also use uh, a second instrument, a more complicated instrument, but in the interest of time, I will just skip it here. So this is our uh, empirical strategy. We predict mobile coverage as a function of lightning intensity inter interacted with time trend and in the second stage, we regress mobile coverage on infant mortality. And of course, we include uh, other controls as, as well. Excuse me. Now, let me show you our findings. This is our baseline naive regression, which is simply regression of mobile coverage on infant mortality rate. So this tells us so our preferred uh, Specifications are in columns two and four. These are uh, these include full uh, full controls, uh, and, and these are what we consider to be our main results. I mean, there isn't actually much difference between uh, the, the the four columns, but you will see later that things might uh, will start changing when we go to the IV strategy. So what this tells us is just to give meaning to this caution roughly a 10 percentage point increase in mobile coverage is to 0 0.3 percent, uh, percentage point reduction in infant, in infant mortality. Relative to the sample mean, this amounts to roughly a 4% decrease in infant mortality, not percentage point, 4%. This is really small. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it's just really difficult to assign causal meaning to this. So this takes us to our second approach, instrumental variable strategy. These are results from the first stage. So I'll just quickly walk through this. I won't, I won't be spending much time here. What I want to show you here is that lightning strikes do predict uh, mobile coverage. And you see the coefficients are negative for, uh, throughout, except 2017. No, not uh, 2015. Sorry, sorry, these are not order 2015. For everything else, they are negative and mostly statistically significant. And that statistical significance declines, or the, the coefficient size and statistical significance also declines over time because of technological advance. Now we have more defensive technologies as a result. The impact of lightning intensity as an instrument for mobile coverage is just gradually weak. So these are our main results. 
So our instrument are really good results. Then I want to take your attention, to focus your attention, column two, because column two includes all controls and we have grid fixed effects. So the identification comes from grid specific variation in mobile coverage. Basically, we are comparing the outcomes of children who were born where mobile coverage is lower against those born when mobile coverage is higher within the same grid set. So everything else is controlled for. So the, what this implies is a 10, a 10 percentage point increase in mobile coverage would lead to a 0 0.45 percentage point increase, uh, sorry, decrease in infant mortality rate. This is a really large impact. And at the need, at the mean dependent value of our outcome variable in the, in the sample, this amounts to more than 50%. Sorry, sorry, I, 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 should, I should take, uh, I, I will take a step back. Sorry, yeah, so in terms of, let me first translate this in terms of, uh, number of lives saved, right? With so the re, so the motivation for this is the relative uh, difference in infant mortality rate across regions. Africa having the, the largest, with fifty two uh, days per one thousand live births, right? So what's the impact of a zero point four five percentage point decrease in infant mortality rate relative to that? So this translates to roughly three lives saved per 1,000 live births. This is huge. This is a, for a 10 percent, for a 10 percentage point increase in mobile coverage. If you want to take this to the extreme and compare an area that has no coverage to an area that has complete coverage, 100 percent, then the difference between these two areas in terms of infant mortality, assuming linear impact across coverage levels, different coverage levels, that would be roughly 66% reduction in, in uh, infant mortality. That's huge. And the impact size on its own is really kind of too big to believe, but others have found similar impacts uh, for say, for example, industrial development of mining activity. Areas with mining activity, see more than 50% reduction in infant mortality rates. So our estimates are comparable to recent estimates in, in, in the literature. Now, let me give you uh, some, so we're, uh, okay, almost to run uh, out of time. So let me give you some of uh, the mechanisms, some, some little mechanisms. So we envisage four channels. The first is health knowledge of mothers. And as you can see, so we have four sets of variables here, um, whether or not mother knows ORS, whether the mother has heard of uh, tuberculosis, whether she, uh, she believes TB is curable or, or, and whether it should be kept secret. Across the board, you see that mobile phones improve uh, this health knowledge outcomes. Uh, their mothers are more knowledgeable. My mothers in areas with, with mobile coverage are more knowledgeable on the effect of ORS in reducing diarrhea. They have heard of tuberculosis. They believe TB is curable. And they believe that it should not be kept secret. Uh, transmittable things such as TB should not be kept secret. These are positive uh, outcomes as a result of health knowledge. And in terms of health behavior, which is our second proposed channel, uh, we know malaria is one of the major uh, factors when it comes to infant mortality in Africa and preventive behavior uh, that relates to malaria is, is an important dimension to explore. And that's what we do here. We see that areas that have mobile coverage have better, uh, so mothers in areas with mobile coverage sleep under bed nets in better numbers and the same with kids. The number of uh, mothers who report their kids sleep under a pesticide treated bed net is higher in areas with mobile coverage. And in terms of uh, hygienic practices, we observe significant gains as well. 
So there is decrease in opinification and there is uh, increase in hygienic disposal of uh, these tools. And, uh, and so this is what we want to do. So the chain we have in mind is we have health behavior. So we start with uh, health knowledge leads to better health behavior, which would translate into better health care utilization and better child outcomes. I'll try to connect the dots for you. So the third outcomes are health care utilization. So we, here we look at vaccination for measles, pneumonia, and vitamin A uh, supplementation. For all uh, three outcomes, we observe uh, positive gain, gains from uh, mobile coverage. Statistically significant and relatively large gains in these outcomes. And the final set of uh, healthcare utilization variables we have are related to maternal uh, care. That's more specifically prenatal care in health center. And you see it is higher in areas with mobile phone coverage. Here, uh, I, I, I'm talking in terms of causal impacts. These are our IV estimates. So uh, mobile coverage leads to increased use of prenatal care in health centers. And finally, to connect the dots, we look at short-term child health outcomes. As you can see, we have uh, lower rates of cough, diarrhea, and fever. The diarrhea results are not statistically significant, but are of the expected side, uh, sign negative and fever negative as well. So we have a bunch of robust checks. I'm not going to go through it. And if uh, you, you guys have questions, we can come back to this. So to conclude, the main takeaways are that in this paper, we provide another evidence on the impact of digital technologies on uh, infant mortality. Uh, we observe improvements in child health and their survival. And this is primarily uh, driven by improvements in health knowledge, in uh, adoption of uh, health practices and utilization of healthcare services. And this would have significant implication on how we see uh, the, the impact of uh, infrastructure, specific digital infrastructure in Africa, uh, because these are spillover effects. These the interventions are not meant to reduce infant mortality. So what we capture in this paper is basically spillover effects of infrastructure that was meant to do something else, but it is having a positive uh, impact on infant mortality. Okay, I guess that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Gibram. Um, that's a really great, <clears throat> great and fascinating paper with lots of food for thought. Um, we have about 20 minutes for um, questions. And um, so feel free to put your question in the chat or, or raise your hand. Um, I'll, I'll take the moderator's privilege and ask one while we're waiting for everyone to um, kind of gather their thoughts. Um, I, I mean, I think the, the data wrangling you've done here is, is, is just really impressive. So many different sources of um, geospatial and remote sensed and, and survey data. Uh, it's obviously such a, a hugely important question that I think, you know, we might have thought was really not addressable in a causal framework. Um, and I guess my, my main question would be, you know, the, the IV also seems uh, really creative. I had never realized uh, that there was this, this um, sort of strong relationship between uh, lightning and, and mobile phone coverage. Um, but can you give us any, I often find in these IV papers, it's, it's really helpful if, in addition to showing the first stage, which, you, you know, I, the F stat was 20, which is, which is good, but it could be, could be higher, right? Um, can you give examples of specific countries or regions where um, you, you might think that this is somewhere where mobile coverage would have gone immediately to because this is a wealthy population, this is where mobile uh, operators would want to, to work? But actually, like the costs are so high um, because of this lightning that actually they they kind of uh, omitted it until a later stage, or 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 is it a kind of just an aggregate relationship that that, that we're looking at? So uh, we don't have a specific example uh, that I can tell you. But so in terms of if, we, if I could take you back to 
this map here, the coverage map, you see that it starts kind of primarily in Southern Africa, in Morocco, and kind of the Northern tip of Egypt. That's where it starts. And then it gradually spreads throughout Africa. So these maps are at subnational level. So at nationally, you, it's difficult to take. So in the African context, uh, so there is a bit of a mix in, in the types of mobile uh, telephone operators. There are operators uh, that operate in multiple countries and country-specific operators. And this dilemma as, as to where to expand relates to both kind of take MTN for example. MTN have, I think it's a South African company starts in South, South, South Africa. It's now dominating the West African market as well. So probably their decision, whether or not they want to operate in Ghana or Nigeria will not be affected by lightning activity in these countries. And they will probably won't be affected on whether or not they want to operate in Lagos, right? It's just mostly this is going to be driven by their, driven by their activities in rural areas. In rural areas where we turn to kind of their investment may not be as big. And so the other instrument which I have not discussed delves deeper in this. Uh, when countries hand out contracts, license for operations, they require companies to operate in rural areas where the market is not as profitable. Then they probably have to optimize where they want to go first. So probably the lightning is going to inform some of that decision. That, well, that's what I suspect. But I don't have anecdotal evidence where kind of activity in certain areas too much and they say, okay, no, we're not going to do it. I, I don't have any specific examples. Oh, that's great. That's, uh, I'm, I'm sure the, sec the second instrument sounds like it speaks, speaks to this a lot. Um, so we have, I, I see we have a question from David and then Jesse, and then we have one from Sebastian in the chat. So maybe let's start with David. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks. And it's a, I think it's a really great paper. Uh, you know, uh, I do think that um, uh, mobile phones are having a big impact in Africa. But I, uh, you know, I think probably like you, I was uh, you know, shocked at the effect sizes, uh, which may be real, but it makes me a little bit worried about the instrument. And uh, so I was trying to think of alternative explanations. And I think uh, there's a there's a emerging literature using the same approach uh, with the DHS merging it to air pollution data, and that that approach finds very large effects of air pollution, maybe a third of child deaths in Africa, according to that approach, are linked to air pollution. Uh, and uh, the air pollution is uh, related to climatic effects. Um, so there are wind direction and the other climatic effects affect air pollution, as does the uh, you know emissions uh, and uh, industrialization. Um, uh, Sahara also has a big effect on air pollution because of dust. Um, and so I just wonder if you've controlled for that, and you know is that a potential alternative mechanism uh, which could be explaining these results? Uh, yeah. So uh, we have not control for pollution, but it's not obvious to me how pollution would be correlated to lightning strikes. So of course, lightning strikes would be correlated with other climatic variables, temperature and precipitation, right? So lightning strikes is highly correlated with rainfall activities. So if you don't control for rainfall, you are probably picking up the effect of rainfall uh, with the lightning strikes uh, variable. So we do control for that. We control for temperature, which, which is known to have impact on, on health outcomes and also precipitation. We can check if there is anything uh, coming from pollution, but the correlation is it's not obvious to me why kind of, it would be a problem if pollution affects both child health outcomes and lightning activity, right? Uh, but I, it's not clear to me why that would be the case. It's clear it would be correlated with child health outcomes, but not lightning strikes, but it's something we can definitely explore. Great, and now Jesse? 
Yeah, thanks very much. Um, and thanks, Kiran. This is a great paper. I, I really enjoyed the presentation. And I hope there's a, a working paper or a published version that, that we could examine sometime soon. I'd, I'd really like to get into it some more. Now, so my colleagues are asking you questions about the IV and the strategy. And I, I think that's a fruitful line of inquiry. But I'm going to depart from that and ask you about a development question. So broadly, this kind of work reminds me of you know things like Jeffrey Williamson's articles about the spread of literacy and the production of agriculture and then the effects on health. And I'm wondering here, when you're looking at phones, if you assume that the phone is having some large effect, let's just say we believe the result for now, it's having a large effect on, on child health. I'm wondering, do you think that would happen in all settings or is it only happening in particular kinds of settings at maybe a particular development stage? And depending on your answer to that, I'd kind of wonder like, where would this fit in a development policy strategy? Yeah, so uh, this is, these are really important questions. So uh, let me start with kind of potential heterogeneity in terms of the level of development of communities or countries. So we don't actually do that. That's an important dimension to explore, but we do look at the effects by rural urban areas. And as you know, rural urban areas don't have uh, diff have different le level of access to other infrastructures such as roads, right? So now the story is you bring in mobile technology. Are they substitutes to other technology, other infrastructure, or are, or are they complementary? So are mobile phones more effective in areas that have access to health facilities? And it would be easier for people to maybe learn about health behavior and go speak to their health care provider. Or is, it, is the impact greater because it is substituting the need for an in-person interaction? So to explore that a bit, we don't really have a fine data, but we split the sample by urban rural, we see no impact. No, sorry, we see no, no difference in the impact size. What that tells me is perhaps there is no complementarity with other infrastructure. It is replacing other mediums of communication when it comes to health, health uh, information. Now, in terms of the stages of development, that would be an important uh, angle to explore. We haven't done that. So maybe that's something we can do. I think it's really interesting if you don't find any urban rural difference, right? That no. does illuminate the, the thinking that you're providing. Yeah. It makes me wonder like, okay, so let's say we really care about child health and we don't care as much about the research angle, All right? What if, what if you just said, okay, let's um, uh, take a country where child mortality is uh, a significant problem. Should we distribute phones? All right, is that the take home? Yeah, so basically, so this is, as I said, the story is a spillover story, right? So mm. infrastructure is always good. So then yeah, yeah, as yeah. if you are a policy maker, <laughs> it's just a question of priorities, right? Now yeah. with mobile phones, you kind of facilitate trade, economic activity, and there is positive externality to it kind of unintentionally, you are going to kind of gain, achieve health gains out of it. So basically, if you are a policymaker and evaluating alternative interventions, infrastructure investments, then you'd have to factor in this uh, spillover, positive spillover impact that would more likely bump the value of mobile phones Say compared to other infrastructure, so we, I, I have not. So we have not tasted say water infrastructure. I cannot compare our results to the mm. effects of water, but I can tell you uh, there is a spillover effect because these technologies, these infrastructure are not meant to reduce. They are not designed for that purpose, right? For health intervention, but they are achieving that. So basically, this would be a fruitful tool for policymakers, and if you are, if they are considering maybe expanding. 
uh, mobile phone technology to rural areas and having second thoughts because the fi there's fixed cost involved, right? So basically what our story tells them is, okay, maybe when you do this, people will communicate better and they maybe get uh, politically more active and you have more engaged citizens and economic activity may be a bit better, but also you're going to see significant improvements in health outcomes. That's the story we want to tell. So uh, in terms of going back to the first question, I'm quite not, uh, yeah, so the, the thing you noted about working paper, we have a complete paper if you're interested. So hope, hopefully we'll come out as a working paper this is for next week, but I'm happy to share uh, our complete paper. Of course, it will not have this heterogeneity you suggested. <laughs> we, we will try and explore that, but I'm happy to share the draft we have. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. So we had um, another question by chat. This is from Sebastian. And he, um, Sebastian, I'll, I'll just read it out, but unless you prefer to read it, just, just go ahead and jump in. Otherwise I can read it. Um, okay, it says, um, so Sebastian says, as an alternative identification strategy, could you look at the cost of using phones in terms of the charges or fees used to make calls? I presume that's different across countries and changes over time. That is, instead of using coverage, uh, you could use essentially a, affordable coverage me measure, which might affect how people use uh, or not their phones. Yeah, so this is an interesting uh, angle, but my worry is could be endogenous, right? So phone uh, service charges are determined by mobile operators and may, governments may limit how far they can push it, but it's determined by mobile operators and they probably charge more in areas where they have greater demand. And areas with greater demand are likely to be urban areas and relatively well endowed with other infrastructure. So, the, what you would identify with an instrument like that would be uh, will not be a causal uh, estimate. That's my my concern. You need an uh, you need an instrument on the demand side also. It's getting yes. getting it's getting pretty yeah. complicated. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm looking for oh uh, Sebastian now response in the chat. I think this would be a standard or common fee for the entire country, usually. Yeah. Oh, OK. Something to think about. OK, yeah, so that's something we can think about. Uh, I'm looking through to see other hands raised. So please please jump in if you have other questions um, uh, or, or share them in the chat. Um, I'm, I'm not currently seeing any, so I, I'll take another. I'll, I'll give another question. Um, so Tibram, I was just thinking when you say we control for rainfall and we control for heat, I was wondering, so thinking about rainfall and, and other, you know, ways that that could violate the exclusion restriction, um, you know, my mind sort of went to humidity and, and health uh, conditions associated with high rainfall. So I thought of malaria and I wonder, and I, I think that sort of, you might also want to control for rainfall times heat to get at something that might approximate sort of local um, suitability to, to malaria, or even better, I know there are now these very large georeference maps for malaria prevalence, um, mm -hmm. groups like the Malaria Atlas Project. Um, and I think that's the, that's the main one. They can give you these kind of gridded maps of the continent with local um, suitability to, um, to malaria. And if you haven't already done that, that might be a way of getting at some of the, just kind of rule out these other, other channels. Um, and the other thing that I was thinking of is just in your causal framework, um, it seems like, as you mentioned, there's two different mechanisms that could be at work. There's a kind of knowledge mechanism um, or kind of health services access. And then there's uh, socioeconomic uh, and kind of broader social determinants. People can trade more, they can have more economic activity. And I wonder where mobile money enters this this study, um, you can imagine, and I think the, the, the Jack and Suri work that you cited in the first slide speaks to this, kind of the availability of mobile money to, to cushion shocks and, and allow urban rural remittances. Um, is there any kind of comparable phased expansion of mobile money that you could use to try to uh, isolate some of the channels at work here? Okay. Uh, so. Let me start with your first comment. It's not a question. Kind of the malaria suitability. So the malaria suitability map. So I've I've seen this. It's, it could be an important source of data for us to control. But 
in terms of purely identification, we do control for grid cell fixed effects. So these grids are 11 kilometer by 11 uh, kilometer. So this would be such map would be relevant if within each grid cell we observe change in the level of stability for malaria. If you on average assume that in a smaller grid cell such as that, the, the let's call it an index. This index, it would be the same across space within that grid cell. Then you probably add, you, you don't really add much to the analysis. It would be absorbed by the grid cell fixed effects. But it would be, because this is publicly available, we can quickly check. That's, that's uh, an important suggestion. What was the second point, sorry? It was about mobile money. And mobile money, yeah. Yeah, so as I showed you earlier, mobile money is highly correlated with mobile coverage. So basically, if we control for whether or not a family or say household uses mobile money, my suspicion is it could maybe slightly partial out some of that variation, but I don't think it would cause significant debt, but it's just something we can easily do because we have that data. Yeah. And it, I mean, in a way, you don't want to control for the center. You, it is part of the effect, right? But it, it's endogenous as well. Yeah. Yeah. Part you of have, we have to yeah. instrument for it as well. I think we have three minutes left, and it looks like we have one last question from David. So maybe we can take that last question uh, from David. Yeah, just quickly, I just shared a paper which estimates the effect of lightning on air pollution and the effect of air pollution on lightning. Uh, it may be useful. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So you just email it to me? Uh, I'll email it in the chat. Oh, okay, perfect. So I'll, I'll copy it. Thank you. I appreciate this. Wonderful. I'm just scanning for any last hands. And I think we, we may have covered all the questions. So um, I, I hope everyone else will join me. I think uh, the, the creativity and the carefulness of this uh, research design are really, really impressive. And so uh, please join me in thanking Kibram for, for joining us at the seminar today. Thanks, Kibram. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for the invitation.